Hello and welcome to the first night of small groups. We're so excited to be back with you. I'm Zane and I'm going to get it kicked off tonight. We're going to get right into it. I want to ask you a few questions here this evening. The first one might be the easiest to answer. Do you love the Lord? Now, it's a simple question, but it's one that we need to be asking ourselves from time to time. If your answer is yes, then there's another question that should soon follow. How is the feeding going? Now that one might be a little bit strange, so let me share a passage of Scripture uh, that might clarify that just a little bit. In the 21st chapter of John, the resurrected Jesus is talking to Simon Peter, and in the 15th verse, he asks this question. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? Peter answers him in the next verse and says, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus replies with this bombshell, Feed my lambs. Jesus goes on to ask Peter this question two more times, and every time Peter replies, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you, much like any of us would answer. But Jesus follows it, follows it up every time with feed my lambs, feed my sheep, tend my sheep. So the next question I ask should be self-explanatory. Do you think this was important to the Lord? Loving the Lord and serving Him faithfully cannot be done without tending to others. Now, looking to others is going to be a theme this uh, year at Small Groups, this semester. We have a tendency to put the focus on ourselves. Now, this is a natural tendency, but it's not a godly one. So the next question is, how? How do we do this? Over the coming months, we're going to be getting into more specifics, uh, but I want to give you the first step here tonight. It's asking for His Spirit to come into and lead your life. Now the Apostle Paul asked a question to some believers he found in Acts chapter 19 at Ephesus. He said, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Go ahead and ask your neighbor that right now. Go ahead and ask him. Now some of you may have answered that question yes, and thank the Lord for that. You know how much of a life-changing experience that was for you. But some of you may have answered like the believers there in Ephesus. We didn't even know there was such a thing as the Holy Spirit. Let me stop long enough to say that if it hasn't happened for you, there's a group there of people that would love to pray for that to happen tonight. Be brave. Ask someone around you to help you pray, and it can happen right where you are tonight. You don't have to have a church service. You don't have to have an altar. You just have to ask, and the Lord will fill you with His Spirit right there in that living room or wherever you find yourself tonight. With that said, I want all of us, whether we've been filled with His Spirit for years or in Jesus' name we're going to be filled for the first time there at small groups tonight, to have a good understanding about what this is for. Acts 1 and 8, Jesus is fixing to ascend into heaven but before he goes, he tells his disciples, go wait for the promise. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. And he gives them some insight about what it will be for. He says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, that's first, in Judea and Samaria, that's second, and to the end of the earth. That means everywhere. So, if you didn't already know this, your Holy Ghost isn't just about you. Now, let me clarify. Is it essential for your personal salvation? You better believe it is. Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3 and 5, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. It's essential for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But it goes so far beyond all of that. He fills you with His Spirit for you first, and trust me, you won't regret it for yourself, but He also fills you so that you can be a witness for Him wherever you go. Now that's a broad statement, I know. And like I said earlier, we'll get into more specifics as the semester goes forward. 
But every topic we're going to be discussing this semester is about others. And in every area, being filled with His Spirit is essential. Now some people say, and you might be one of these, that they can't do anything in their day without coffee. You have any coffee fans there tonight? I'm not personally in that camp, but let me tell you something. I don't want to do anything in my day without the Spirit leading and guiding me. So do you have trouble talking to people about the Lord? His Spirit will give you the power to do that. Do you have trouble knowing what to pray for people and how to intercede for them? His Spirit will give you the power to do that. Do you struggle seeing the practical needs all around you and how to help others? You guessed it. His Spirit will help you with that too. His Spirit in your life didn't put a frown on your face. It didn't make you not like people and it sure didn't make you put the focus on yourself. If reaching others around you is something that you struggle with, then it's time to be refreshed and repurposed by His Spirit tonight. Now, I'm not going to belabor the point because I want you to discuss this amongst your group. If any of you have taken care of animals, you know that it involves work. I learned this lesson early on growing up. My grandfather used to take us on a trek every day. He would take us down to the barn to feed the horses. Then we'd take a ride on the side-by-side -side and go down to the pond and feed the fishes. Now, getting out that feeding pail and making sure all the animals were fed required being intentional. You don't keep animals alive by feeding them when you feel like it. No, you have to do that every day. The same should be said about our witness. It's an everyday occurrence. Now, if you're gathering in your group tonight, I think it's safe to say that you love the Lord. So don't let your previous mess up stop you from letting the Lord use you to be a witness and feed His sheep. Let's make up in our minds tonight that we're going to seek after the Spirit, get out the feeding pail, and get to work. I'm believing for great things this year in small groups. So let's discuss this. Let's get into it. Let's feed those sheep.